See how swollen my thumb is? I nearly broke it yesterday with a hammer. <laughs> that really hurt. How do you like these uh, guitar straps I've been making? I'm making three different types. Plain, antiqued, and alligator covered. There's, there's four different layers of coloring on this, and it's all rubbed in by hand. Not with bare hands, since it would stain your fingers, which of course my fingers are stained a little bit, but anyway, I've uh, got 11 guitar straps to make, of which I've only made five, and that's working full steam, so I apologize that I hadn't had many videos this week, but it's just been incredibly busy. Humble apologies uh, for that. I uh, actually mean that. This seems like a kind of an esoteric video, but it's... Uh, questions that I keep getting over and over again in addition to the next video about where does magnetism come from. That's the video after this one. People are talking about the language for communicating with the universe. It's not like the universe is a sentient being here. I'm not talking about pantheism or panentheism. Obviously so. Um, that's uh, slightly ridiculous. Actually, it's extremely ridiculous. But there is a primer and it's necessary for the translation of anything, too. This is the reason why all ancient Egyptian translations are extremely horrific. You can actually transliterate something, and of course, like, well, it's an accurate translation, that's what this word means. Not really, it's close, but, you know, without a primer, the translation becomes incomprehensible. I don't know if you've read any translation of, uh, like, the Book of the Dead or anything else, and, and the same is true of Pali which have been translating now for 20 years, you have to have a primer. You have to know what's being said. The reason why all the translations of Plotinus, even the very best, which is only a partial by Thomas Taylor, is, well, I mean, you read it and it doesn't make any sense. I mean, it's a beauty to read it in the ancient uh, Greek, the Koine Greek, but the problem is that you have to have a primer. It's not only written in uh, ancient Greek, it's ancient Greek philosophical, it's ancient Greek philosophical shorthand. Not only that, it's ancient Greek philosophical and it's shorthand, and you have to have a primer for understanding Pythagorean, which is no different than Egyptian, no different than Indian monism. So there's four layers of complexity that makes a translation of that particular work incredibly hard. The same is true for, and I use this loosely, but it's the words that other people have used, like how do you communicate with or understand what Mother Nature is saying? And there's just a few basic things. Some of these are not so basic, but they are incredibly simple. Most people can't see forests for the trees. As far as the metaphysical evolution of humanity goes, people, humanity in general, is still throwing rocks at the moon. With our computers and our microwaves and our electric cars, human beings are not uh, sufficiently evolved. And I'm not talking about intellectually, because intelligence, i.e. episteme, Someone's really smart. Intelligence is not wisdom. Nor do I confuse intelligence with wisdom. You actually have to understand what's going on. You need to understand natural order. Natura naturans. And none of us were taught that stuff in high school. None of us were taught that stuff in college. I mean, I don't care if you did post-grad work. You're just not. Especially these days, because... Uh, you know, I know I kind of sound like an old fart when I say this, but, you know, kids just buried in front of their iPads, their iPhones, you know, their computers. They don't get out. They don't observe nature. You know, there's an essence to the thing. There are people that live out in the woods that, uh, you know, might have a sixth grade education. They may not be able to read or write, but they could read Mother Nature. They know when to plant crops. You know, they can tell you without looking at anything on their iPhone app. You know, that tomorrow is going to be bad weather. You know, there's countless other things. Like, how do you know this? I mean, they can track animals. Where someone will look down, it's like, what on earth are you looking at? I can't see anything. Yeah, there's uh, two deer. There's a mother deer followed by his little, uh, her little uh, doe deer. And they traveled through here two days ago. It's like, I, I still don't see anything. <laughs> People don't have that within them. They say, if you use it or lose it, 99 percent of humanity, and that's not an understatement, has never used it. So these uh, muscles of comprehension and observation of natural order have never been used. I mean, they're not, they're not atrophied. They never grew to begin with to atrophy. So that's a serious issue. People are not observant of nature. They don't look around them because everybody's busy. 
you know, planning their day out on their little digital devices. The other nature of coming to the understanding of something, and I'm of course writing a booklet on retroduction right now, it's the ancient lost Pythagorean, and who knows before them? We don't know before the Pythagoreans, but obviously this was extant before the Pythagoreans. Pythagoras of Samos, like, oh, he learned everything from the Egyptians. Well, we might have, but that's pure speculation. We can't go back that far to say anything definitive without a time machine, of course. But this retroductive analysis to understand things, this uh, via negativa, uh, i.e. of theurgy, to understand natural order, you know, the nature of essa or essence, and how it is consubstantial with matter. Is the order of things. Um, the greatest secret, quote-unquote, of the Pythagoreans was that of incommensurability. And you could be speaking plain English to somebody, but they don't have a primer in their heads. So, you know, even with my skills, it would take a long time to explain it to somebody where they actually have a full understanding what incommensurability is. You just can't blurt it out in a sentence or two, or not even a paragraph. So this retroductive methodology is incredibly important. It's not induction or deduction. It's retroduction. And it's the theurgic method. It's the method of apophaticism. And, you know, I really not mentioned this in any other video. Of course, I mentioned in a little booklet on retroduction. Doesn't it make you pause to wonder that the greatest minds who ever lived, Pythagoras, Plato, Plotinus, Syrianus, um, Jakob Burma, Meister Eckhart, um, Roger Boscovich, who wrote Theoria Philosophiae, uh, Theoria Philosophiae, uh, excuse me, I'm going to edit that out, Theoria Philosophiae Naturalis, tongue-tied, <laughs> you know, which was uh, T Nikola Tesla's greatest book. You know, all of these people understood the retroductive method to come to the understanding of things, so... Here's something else about observing natural order, because a lot of Victor Schauberger's uh, people say, you know who Victor Schauberger is? Well, of course I know who he is. You should know who he is, too. A lot of his books are free. You can find them online. Um, you have to have direct, innocent, unjaded observation. Most people, you could show them something really important in nature, like a vortex pool of pressure meters. Yeah, so what? I see a little whirlpool in the water. You have to have unjaded. You have to look at it like a child. You have to have a desire to know and understand. You could lead a horse to water, and you certainly cannot make it drink without the ability. It's like, I want to learn stuff. Well, that's a good start, but you could show the most intelligent people with high IQs, which doesn't mean anything at all. You know, some of the most important secrets of the universe, but without a desire to learn and understand, and to, you know, it is a this is a burning desire, too. And by the way, there's one wholesome desire. There's, all desires are unwholesome, akusala in ancient Pali, but there's one wholesome, or kusala desire, aitanha, kusala tanha. Why am I speaking ancient Pali? None of you know what I'm saying. One wholesome desire that can be fulfilled, and that's the desire for wisdom and understanding. So you have to have this burning desire, the wholesome desire, you know, to understand things. And once you have the primer, you really fundamentally only need two things. You need that wholesome desire, and you have to have the primer. What is the primer? Well, I, I've got it down in the description. I published this for everybody to look at. I think last year, it's the uh, Aurora Sapientia. It basically has the synopsis of the entire universe on a double-sided card. You could print it out or download it. It's on PDF format. It's very, very, very simple, but it's not simplex. So you have to have this primer of simplicity, this principal attribute understanding, i.e. the conjugate nature of the universe. The conjugate nature of the universe geometrically is the hyperboloid and the torus. Each is the negative image of the other. I've talked about this endlessly. Or specifically still, this conjugate pair of a force in motion and inertia and acceleration, respectively the dielectric and magnetic. Everything is either attraction, repulsion, you know, specifically capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity, which is just fancy words for saying, they're not that fancy words, of saying pressure mediation, because that's all Mother Nature knows. She's a hairy armpit chick with dreadlocks and muddy feet. Everything is simplex pressure mediation. There is nothing in this universe that is not explained by, other than, or outside of, simplex pressure mediation. Nothing. So it really is that simple. So once someone has a primer 
and they have a, a wholesome desire to understand, everything proceeds from there naturally. You have to be unjaded. You have to have direct, innocent observation of the mechanics of nature, like Victor Schauberger did or Nikola Tesla did. They said, if you understand the secrets of the universe, direct quote from Tesla, it needs to be understood in terms of uh, frequency and vibration, which of course is also too accurate. You know, it turns out the reconciliation of light and matter is really simple. Matter fundamentally, and of course all atoms are compounded hydrogen, matter is nothing other than ultra high energy light, way above that of gamma, where it becomes stable. Stable relatively in respect to a human lifespan, incredibly stable from a cosmic uh, perspective, you know, incredibly unstable nonetheless, but for human beings, you know, we could. This ball of lead, which is covered in uh, latex, you know, we'll, you know, if I throw it out in the space, you know, be there for countless billions of years. So, from human perspective, that of course is incredibly stable. Ultimately, though, it's not stable at all. No matter, it's stable. It's constituent components. By the way, lead is uh, depleted uranium anyway. That's what's uh, heating up the Earth's mantle is the uh, depletion, the radioactivity of uh, uranium. You know, according to the experts or so-called, that could be true, that could be not true, we could debate that, but that's not, the benefit. that's not the basis of the discussion of this video. So, once you have a primer and a desire to know, you just observe Mother Nature simply with the application of retroduction, which of course cuts a lot of the fat off the, the bone, as the saying goes, makes it a more direct um, method to understanding what the universe is actually saying. Then people can live in natural order. You know, governments and laws only exist to keep, to keep stupid people in check. That's the only reason they do exist. Well, they also do exist to keep uh, evil people in power, but that's a matter for another debate. It's not a debate at all. Actually, it's not even debatable. But that's the only reason fundamentally that laws exist, is to keep stupid people in check. Those people who follow natural order have no need of laws. Morality, is, of course, is a completely irrelevant to anybody having reached the other shore. Morality is superficial. It has nothing to do with the liberation ontology that is based in wisdom. And I debated that amongst the so-called Buddhists for decades. You know, we talk about morality and morality. Morality is completely irrelevant. You know, if there was only one person on earth and that person was you, who are you being moral for? And that has no connection to wisdom and transcendence and understanding natural order. True understanding of natural order of course, you understanding what nature is saying is to, you know, to erase primordial agnosis, which is, of course, is the impetus and the engine behind perpetual suffering, false identity, bhava no bhava, becoming and re-becoming from the ancient Pali. I don't know why in some of these videos I'll speak Pali. I sometimes have dreams in ancient Pali, which has been a dead language now for an incredibly long time, but I've been translating it for a really long time, so... You know, this is the language of the universe. Simplex pressure mediation, the conjugate pair, retroductive analysis, and you have to have a primer of this conjugate pair of simplicity. Mother Nature does not have a calculator. You know, she doesn't do math either. Math is a human concept. There's no math in the universe. There's a logos in the universe, the eristos dios, and uh, people say, golden ratio. People love to say, well, what's, what about what's the golden ratio? I don't know. It's like beauty and nature and harmony. Well, that's a superficial uh, elaboration, but it's not descriptive and it's not explicative. There's no math in the universe at all. Mathematicians, of course, you know, everything's a hammer, is a nail. If you're a mathematician, everything you need to be counted. I don't believe in it unless you can count it. Here we got two atoms that are bumping. <laughs> everything they, that's why I call it the cult of bumping particles. They explain everything in terms of this particle interacted with that one, and then that <laughs> it doesn't work that way. The universe doesn't work that way. You can't explain instantaneous action at a distance. These people that never defined a field because a field is not quantizable. You can't quantize a field. You can with a vector over a period of time, as in joules, watts, volts, amps, so on and so forth, but you can't quantize a field in itself of itself, i.e. the essa or essence of a field. No. So this is a language for communicating, not that you're talking with the universe. You are the universe yourself, by the way. And you don't understand yourself, which of course is also too part of the problem. 
But uh, if you're coming to understanding of what the universe is actually saying, and it's really, really simple. Pressure mediation, conjugate pairs. To analyze it uh, subjectively, things that are not objectively knowable since they are by definition subjects. Thence we have the ancient method, which is so incredibly useful. I've been using it for a long time. Retroduction. Apophaticism, the via negativa, neti neti methodology. The Indians and the Greeks and the Egyptians were on the same page on that. It goes by many different names, but it's just theurgy. Very, very simple. And yet it's so hard to explain to people. They don't, they've never developed that muscle. So it's not only atrophied, it's, you know, it's like a vestigial appendage, kind of like a fifth toe that's like sticking out of the top of your foot or something. I've seen that once. It's like, <laughs> it's like it doesn't work. It's just there. You know, it doesn't do anything. People have never developed that skill. Uh, but it is developable. Developable. There we go. That was a tough word, right? Anyway, that was uh, this particular video was to answer and uh, approach or broach the question about uh, listening to or communicating with the universe. You have to have the desire to know. You have to understand the fundamental primer, and it has to be approached with a clean, simple mind. And it is an unjaded mind of direct observation, approaching nature on its own grounds for what it is and how it is and how it works, just like Victor Schauberger did, just like Tesla did, so on and so forth. All these people approach nature in the exact same way. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to communicate with me, my email is below in the description, or any donations always welcome. Or you can send me an email about what you'd uh, like me to talk about. Thanks. Goodbye.